Hello. Um, so I, I did a little work ahead of time for this video just so you're not watching me paint the entire um, painting because it would take longer than, than it would to, to just for the videos. But um, so I, I started with the hair here and I'm gonna kind of demonstrate a little bit uh, what I've done to do this. Now, you can see my palette already since I've been painting for a little bit. Um, here's my palette and most of my mixing has just been done in these little trays that they give you on the, uh, in your pan. And again, you can wash that out every time you paint. So don't worry about getting it messed up. You can, in fact, you could even wash it out in between a session and start from fresh. Um, but so what I've done here on the painting is, is if you remember in the last video, I just had you know, the eyes and the eyebrows, I had these dark areas here, right along here, up here, and a couple streaks there, and that was it. So what I did was I just kind of moved up the um, the tonal scale. So I went from my darkest dark, and then I just went up a notch, and I went to my photograph, and I started to seek out um, things that were, were slightly lighter. So if you remember, I was in some of these darks in here in the first video, and some of these lighters, although in, the, in, in this video it might not look like they're that much lighter, but they're slightly lighter. Over in through here, there were some light colors that um, I hadn't incorporated yet, so I, I went a little bit lighter, and in some cases a little bit warmer. And kind of while I was at it, I just sort of kept going at the hair, and I did some of the darker areas down here, and then I gradually made my way all the way up to the lightest light, which is probably right here. In fact, this is arguably the lightest part of the photograph. Um, maybe her nose, that bright spot right there, but other than this right here, and this little uh, highlight on the edge of her hair right here, these two spots are gonna be my lightest areas. When I squint my eyes and look at my photograph, I see these, um, these couple areas, it's probably her nose that's the lightest, but it's easier to tell when you have brights and when you have darks and so on. So you see, you see patterning a little bit better when you squint your eyes like that. So for this video, I just wanted to kind of um, continue along here. And um, I've got my paper towels here. And now with her hair that I've painted down here, I would consider this just kind of like a, the first coat. All right, now remember, I can't really reverse, especially without white in my palette or in my, uh, my pan here. It's hard to reverse back to white. So I can go in and I can clean this up and I can add more details, which I will do later in the painting. But for now, I would consider this an underpainting. I allowed the lights to stay as light as they can be. My darks are pretty dark. I can go in and I can add finer details of the texture of the hair. But for now, I'm just going to leave it alone, okay? Up here, you see that I've got this highlight that is up on her part here. Um, so I've left that light for now. Uh, this dark area right here, you can see is mine in the uh, painting is a little bit light. So, of course, I'll go back in and deepen that and darken that a little bit. But for the most part, I've got uh, most of my darks kind of taken care of. Now, what you might want to do is... Um, kind of pivot into, um, let's say like skin tone, or you could pivot into, you know, lips. It just depends. In this case, uh, Allie, I think, has some lipstick on. So she's going to have a, a separate um, color group in her lips than maybe the rest of her skin. Um, all of us, our, our lips tend to be a little bit slightly different than our skin color, regardless of skin color. So your lips a lot of times are kind of like a separate little project in a way. Um, the the uh, saturation and the color that we use to make our lips is very similar to what we use for the rest of our face and our, for that matter our hair. But um, your lips are usually going to have a slightly different, um, usually a little bit of more of a warmth to them. So, um, you know, I could go with lips right now. I think what I'll do instead though is I'll just start making my way in the darks. Um, on her face. So in that case, okay, and again, part of this is an observational um, uh, exercise. So when I look at this photograph, I don't want to just say, well, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and look, see under her chin here on her neck is a very dark spot right there. So that would be a color that I might want to match, okay? 
Over here, right next to her part, or right next to the hair here, is this very deep dark, dark color here on her kind of her forehead or her temple right there. I have some darks kind of embedded in around her eyes. Her laugh lines are fairly dark. You cannot see her nostrils, but underneath her nostril, especially her left nostril, is a little bit darker right there. Look at in our ears. Our ears, we're going to find those darks too. So we've got these little shapes that are, are very dark that we might want to put in there for that. Okay. So let's get, let's get to painting here. And again, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make uh, one of these deep dark colors. Um, this reminds you of if you ever made a snowflake out of a piece of paper. Um, I actually don't have a hole punch here in the house. So I just folded up um, a piece of a little piece of paper like that and I cut out little semicircles. And then when I open that piece up, I get some uh, dots on there or some cer um, holes in there. Now you don't have to do this many, but the nice thing about this is, is if I want to isolate a color, like let's say on her forehead, I could take my paint and I could paint next to the photograph right here and determine that I've got the right color and then I can go ahead and add it into my painting. Okay, so that is a technique that we definitely would have used um, in, with our oil painting and um, I think can work just as effectively in, the, in this painting here. Okay, now with the hair, um, just quickly, with the hair I uh, brought in um, some brown. Um, I, you know, you can dab on your blues. Again, if I'm making this deep dark color, I'm going to have to bring some of my blue in to deepen it and darken it. Then I'm going to bring in some of my alizarin crimson or my deep red right here. Okay. And let's bring in some yellow, which is kind of like counteracts that violet color. I added a little bit of brown too. All right. We can start to look at um, whether or not we feel like, and I can use my little pad or a piece of copy paper over here to kind of determine if I'm on the right track. I think I actually need a little bit more blue. So I'm going to go next to that. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. Okay. So I'm going to come into this area right here and just kind of paint this in. I don't want to get too, and I need to get a little bit lighter. Just like that. And it's going to look a little weird when you first put it in because it's really not relating to anything <clears throat> anything else. But uh, once, once we start putting in the colors around it, it's going to make more sense to you. Now that I've got a color going that I'm pretty happy with, okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, add just a touch of blue to my palette here. Okay, and I'm going to come into this area right here studying my photograph. Okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to start painting things that aren't there. But I can probably sneak that little thing in right there. All right, now I'm going to add just a touch of red into what I'm doing. Maybe a little bit of orange and some yellow. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. I think that's probably a pretty good color. And now I can come in here and I'm going to put this deep dark color. And again, this color may get darker later. You don't want to go really too dark, actually, because, again, it's hard to reverse that. It's not like you can go back and add white. I'm going to go under her nostril over here and use the fine point of that um, brush. I'm going to paint that in like that. I'm going to add a little bit of water just so I'm a little bit lighter. Test it over here on my copy paper. And I'm going to come around like this, just very carefully looking at that photograph. You know, hopefully we did a good job tracing your um, your photograph, but please definitely look at that painting. I mean, I'm sorry, look at your photograph as you make your moves. Okay, so I can come in here. Now, you might be asking yourself, on this laugh line right here, there's not a real clear delineation between where this shadow begins and ends. I get that. You know, I, I understand that you might be thinking that. But if I'm careful with it, what will happen is, is later when I go to bring the adjacent colors in, I'll be, be able to bring them up right up to it and I can work on that transition. I can work on that, um, that kind of fading that needs to happen um, to make it look more natural. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and get kind of get these shadows in here. 
I can go quite a bit darker and deeper uh, under her chin here. Don't want to go too long today, uh, Natalie. So what what is our time looking at? 10, 10. Okay. I'm going to go just a couple more minutes just to kind of give you something to kind of chew on over the next couple days here. So I'm going to bring in some darks here. Again, very, very important that you're looking at your photograph as you're doing these things. You're not just kind of making generic marks. All the marks that I'm putting on here are related back to, I'm going to leave a little spot for her necklace here. So I'm actually going to leave a little line and I can fix that later for her necklace. Okay. Now I'm going to just get a little bit lighter. I'll add maybe a little bit of yellow. And this area here is just lighter on her neck. A little bit more um, light is coming through there. Go a little bit darker under the chin there. Again, have it in your mind where you can always deepen and darken. It's harder to get light. So very important. If, if I want to go in and darken this a bit more, I will. Like so. Okay, get a little bit of blue in here. Can use these open spots in our palette if you still have some left to kind of use some of that transitional color to do what you have to do. Keeping it sort of generic a little bit at first. I don't want to get, I don't want to commit too much yet. Since we have a minute here or so, let me, um, let me throw in, um, pretty easy to do. Let me just grab a little bit of this violet. So I made a blue and a red here, deep red and a blue. Let's throw a little bit more red because the ears, like the lips, always have a little bit more red to them because they're kind of translucent. So you can see that blood. Okay, so I'm just going to go in and add a little bit of water here because I don't want to get too dark. And I can put some of this stuff in here. And again, can always go back and darken this a little bit more. But for now, I just want to get a little bit of info in here. Kind of starting around this earring. Kind of up like that for now. Okay. Um, I got, whenever I see, this is called economy, but whenever I see I have like a color that I think could probably work somewhere else, I go ahead and try to, um, take advantage of that and just kind of put those colors in. Got to hold your breath a little bit there sometimes to, to pull these colors out here. This is a pretty, uh, dark color here actually. So I'm going to study that photo. Again, very important. Again, hopefully you can trust the drawing, but we want to use our ability, our observational skills to look at that photo and kind of... Now these look kind of crazy. Again, you might be thinking, I'm not going to put streaks all over my face like this. You know, I don't look like this. But again... You have, to, you have to imagine that once you get all the pieces in there, that it will in fact start looking like you. Um, you just have to be patient with this painting. This, this painting is, is going to require definitely some patience on your part, um, waiting for those results. I mean, they're just not going to come uh, automatically. So if you, if you try to force the issue too much, um, you're going to get frustrated and this thing can start to fall apart on you. So... This is just her clavicle right here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of color in there. No big deal. I've got a little spot right here where I can just some of her hair kind of that I can kind of pencil in right there. I've got a little color right here. I'll wait to do all of kind of her chest color uh, later, but I'm just putting in some of the darks right now. I've got this little bit of pooling. You're going to notice this right away, like right here. I really don't want that to pool like that, so I'm going to just sort of dab that off right there. Um, if I ever feel like I kind of maybe got a little too bright or too dark in a spot, I might take that paper towel and just dab that off. Okay. Let's make sure I don't have anything dripping. So I know you didn't get to see the hair. Okay. But to review quickly, what I did is I, you saw me when I put the darks in, in the last video, 
Then I came in and I just did my best to sort of match the tones. And you've got to be very intentional about that. You've got to say, okay, this area is a half tone. This area is light. I have to go darker here. Dark and light is really crucial. Um, the, the, Q, the hue, H-U-E, um, is kind of secondary. Yeah, you want to get the right color, but you really want to get the right light and dark ratio. Again, I'll go back and fix this, but remember we had this little, um, this little bit of highlight in this dark area. I left it right here. Now it's not perfect yet. I'm going to go back and fix that a little bit more. But you can see I went to the next stage in her face here, and I sort of pick and choose a couple areas where I feel like I could come in and put in these deep dark colors as I build my way from dark to light. Now again, that's the way I paint. Um, you saw at, in the last Collaborate where Sarah was, was uh, working more, kind of like almost finishing things off as she goes. A lot of people like to work that way. Sarah, I think it looks great, so um, that works too. But I like to use this kind of step process. And what you'll see over time is I'm going to end up painting this whole thing. And it will probably look pretty good. It'll look like uh, my daughter here. But I'll then go back into it again and again and again. And each time I do it, I'll refine and I'll add more detail until I finally say, you know what, I can't do anymore. It's, it's where I want it to be. So that's all for today. Um, thank you for uh, watching this video. And again, please contact me anytime via email and let me know if you have some questions or you want a little extra help. I'd be glad to jump on uh, in our uh, collaborate room and um, take a look at what you're doing. So um, I'll post this tonight. This is uh, Wednesday night. Have a, a wonderful uh, break here, and uh, please let me know if you need anything. Thanks.